Hey, 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 welcome to St. Stephen Live, uh, the pre-worship experience. We're coming to you a little bit delayed, and uh, that's all because of what, Tyler, give them the technical uh, <laughs> aspects of what's going on. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And again, we apologize for coming to you late. Um, St. Stephen Church um, and across Louisville is experiencing an outage in our internet connection. Right now, we're working hard to make sure that we can give you the same worship experience that you get every single week here at St. Stephen Church. Right now, we're only on Facebook, so welcome to everybody on Facebook. We are working hard now to figure out how we can get to YouTube at the same time. SSCLive.tv will likely not be up today, uh, but we want to encourage you when we give when we in our, we are when we are in getting a little tongue twisted with all these technical terms. I know. <laughs> when we are, we, when we are de doing giving, uh, we want to encourage you that if you normally use sscLive.tv, that will still be available for your use. sscLive.org, again, will be available for your use. Um, so those are there. You just might not be able to watch service there, but you can open another window, go there. But again, we're working through the technical difficulties um, that is happening throughout Louisville. This isn't a specific St. Stephen um, issue. This is an issue that a lot of people are experiencing. Some people might not even be having this issue, um, but unfortunately today, St. Stephen was affected by it. Um, so again, we're live on Facebook right now. YouTube, we're working on a, a solution to get that working. So hopefully by 9.30 within the next few minutes, you'll be able to experience St. Stephen worship service uh, like you do every week. Amen and amen. We were in the back lifting up the prayers because we know the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Come on into the room, share this broadcast, Tell anyone and everyone you know that we are up, but we are streaming our services live from Facebook. How you guys doing? Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday morning. Listen, the praise team was singing heaven down during their <laughs> pre-service rehearsal. And Rev has a powerful word for you, and we do not want you to miss it. Hey, speaking of missing, though, real quick, we've only got a couple of minutes. I have to give a happy anniversary shout out to Miss Vernita and T.A. Spaulding. Yeah, they are celebrating. Happy. The 40 years? Yeah. Uh, 40? 40 years <laughs> is their 40th uh, marital um, anniversary. 40 years right. of marital bliss. And so congratulations to them. And uh, we want to celebrate them on today. How are you doing? Welcome to the pre-worship <laughs> experience. Service will get ready to get started here in a bit. Rev is continuing his sermon series, Flawless. And today's topic is when the hand comes down. That's right. Hey, Miss Crystal, let's jump to the top five things that are happening here at St. Stephen, but let's do it like we always do it. All right. Okay. The top five, five things, things going on here at St. Stephen Church. I want to send like a big shout out to Miss Ebony Ingram Jones. Yeah. The, uh, she is over our women's ministry for a successful, a phenomenal uh, virtual tea that we had on yesterday. That was a lot of fun and so much fun seeing all the ladies dressed up <laughs> and the tables decorated and a wonderful time to celebrate our lady. So big ups to her on that. That's right. So I, I I saw I was I was perusing Facebook. I didn't actually watch it live, but I saw all of the women that were joined in. It was an amazing. Some people telling stories about yes, the first tea yes, yes. and the wonderful Miss Crystal Goodner Spratt. Yes, was the MC for the for the afternoon. And I almost so. had to evict some people from my table. Okay, oh. my daughters, you know, wanted to talk in the process, <laughs> but we had such a wonderful time sharing memories, looking, uh, you know, reflecting on the past, celebrating the present, and looking forward to the future. And so that was a wonderful event. Hey, tomorrow's going down the National Coalition of Churches for Reparations presents the Adolph's Pastors Town Hall, and that's going to be tomorrow, 8 p.m., and pastors are encouraged to be part of this conversation. We're going to be streaming it live from Simmons' Facebook page, and you don't want to miss that. And there's a lot of big speakers that are going to be a part of it. Cornell West, our own pastor, uh, Kevin Cosby, and you, see the, you saw the graphic on your screen. There it is again. Cornell, well, Do Cornell West, Dr. Joseph Evans will be a part, and our own Dr. Lewis Brogdon as well will be a part of that conversation. Conversation. All right. Come into the room. I know you probably walked away because you're like, what? Service isn't happening. It's happening. Come on in. We're going to be streaming <laughs> live uh, from Facebook. There is a citywide internet outage. Internet outage, yeah. But we know the prayers of the righteous avail us much. So everybody just extend your hands towards the screen. Continue to pray. <laughs> and prayer does work because yes, we were back there. Listen. And Minister Kevin James, Minister Kevin James gave us a prayer. Pray. Honey, he prayed um, heaven down. And almost instantly things started connecting like they were supposed that to. That's how prayer so works. So there's power in prayer. <laughs> 
<laughs> but continue to pray. And, uh, you know, Rev has a powerful word and service is going to be amazing. It's going to get ready to get started. Coming What's the sermon topic today? Bit. Sermon topic is when, when, the, hand the, comes when the hand down. comes down. Ooh, he's going to continue his sermon series, Flawless. Flawless. <laughs> I woke up like this, right? <laughs> All right. Hey, don't forget, Brianna, say her name. Virtual concert will be going down Sunday, September 6th, 6 p.m. M. Tell everyone, you know, this is going to be a powerful, powerful uh, celebration as we are continuing the fight, the march towards justice for Breonna Taylor. Some big names, uh, Killer Mike, uh, Dr. Mondre Moffitt, Cornell West, Cornell West, yeah. so many wonderful names. Uh, and so make sure you Join us for Say Her Name, Friday Night Live. Yeah, hey, Friday nights are live with Dosker Manor. The assistant ministers have been ministering um, to our Dosker Manor community, and this isn't a, you know, a specific Dosker Manor thing. Anybody can join this call, um, and you see the screen. It's every Friday evening, um, and this Friday speaker is Minister Dalphine Williams. Um, and the conference call number, you see it up there on your screen, 602-580-9775, and your access code when prompted is 311. One eight five four six. So please tune in every Friday night um, to that conference call at six thirty. All right, cannot believe it. COVID went down when just when we were about to celebrate Women's Month, and we are already to Men's Month. And September is Men's Month. We're kicking it off with the men taking over the Hump Day Sunday School class with That's right. When Men Pray, and it's going to be a different leader every Wednesday at one thirty and Sundays at eight a.m. And this Wednesday, starting off with Will Rogers for our Southern Indiana campus, Little Man Big Prayer. I mm. love that. Hey, we thank you so much for tuning in. We thank you for supporting this ministry. And real quick, I uh, want to send out some other congratulatory announcements. Happy anniversary to Michelle and Jeffrey Jones celebrating their 33rd wow. wedding anniversary. We have the spirit of longevity and marriage here at St. <laughs> Stephen Church. Give me some of yeah, that. Yeah, give some hearts for that one. <laughs> give some hearts for that. And again, T.A. and Bernita Spalding celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Happy birthday to Catherine C. Wright, who is celebrate, who is 79 years old. Wow, 79 years young. 79 years young. <laughs> I like that, Tyler. You're absolutely right. 79 years Jacqueline young. Collins at our Hardin County campus is also celebrating a birthday. And Miss Kim Lee. Kim Lee. <laughs> She's a committed member um, here at St. Stephen Church. A, a wonderful volunteer. Anytime we call her for decorating or anything, she's on there. And she's also a proud member of our St. Stephen Praise team. Amen. Happy birthday to Gabrielle Brooks. Looks like it's time for us to get ready and uh, ready for service, right? Yeah, but before we go, we want to remind you that we are having technical difficulties. We are working on those technical difficulties before uh, we actually begin. We're not far from beginning, but we want to remind you that while you might not be at sclive.tv, all of our giving platforms, again, are still available. You can go to sclive.tv, and that giving button up in the right-hand corner will be available to you. Um, you might not be able to view worship there, but those giving platforms are available to you. So the way that you, you're used to giving, please continue to give that way. Uh, your donations are much appreciated and much needed here at St. Stephen Church. Um, texting to give is also an option. Still, Cash App, all of those are still working. Um, we're live on Facebook right now, but we want to encourage you to um, keep checking back to YouTube if that's your normal platform, because we're working hard to get that up for you. We absolutely are. Looks like we are ready for service. So again, share this broadcast. Tell everyone you know we are streaming live and let's get ready for worship.
Hello, I'm Kevin Cosby, pastor of St. Stephen Baptist Church, and this is my boss. We would like to welcome you to St. Stephen Church online, for we are one church in two states on three campuses. You do not have to belong to St. Stephen Church for us to belong to you. Welcome. Praise the Lord, everyone in your homes, in the building. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. At, can we show them how we rejoice, praise team? This is how you rejoice in your home. Find the area, clear out the living room, whatever you need to do, but stand up and give God praise this morning. Dosker Manor, we miss you. Hardin County, we miss you. St. Stephen, Indiana, we miss you. And of course, St. Stephen, Kentucky, we miss you, Louisville campus. Let's go to God in praise. Just help us sing this song this morning. We have come. We have come. wherever you create a, a sacrifice of praise, create an atmosphere of worship wherever you are, in your home, in your job, in your car, wherever, in the store, take a moment and give God praise. We have come into yourself and concentrate on him. So concentrate on him. That's those bills, those woes that try to distract you from giving God praise. Come on. So forget about yourself. If you make him bigger, everything else seems smaller. Hallelujah.
say amen. You are the king, and you are invited to come in. Won't you welcome him into your house? Won't you welcome him into your heart? You are the king, oh God, and you're invited to come in. Thank you for tuning in to St. Stephen Live. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are. We worship our God on this day, for he is king of all kings, Lord of all lords, and we invite him to come in. Our scripture today comes out of Psalms. It's the first number of Psalms. We'll read in verses 1 through 3. Scripture reads as thus. God blesses those people who refuse evil advice and won't follow sinners or join in the sneering at God. Instead, the low of the Lord makes them happy. And they think about it day and night. They are like the trees growing beside a stream. Trees that produce fruit in season and always have leaves. Those people succeed in everything they do. Let us pray. Dear God, oh God, we are so grateful to you for just being God. For being King of Kings. For being Lord of Lords. God, you remind us through your word that there is a time for everything, a time to live, a time to die, a time for peace, a time for war, a time for sadness, a time for be happy, a time to sit down, and a time to stand up. So God, we ask right now, oh God, that you would strengthen your people, oh God, at a time like this, oh God, to stand up on your word, God to stand up and just believe in that which you have proclaimed from the beginning of time, that you are the King of kings, Lord of lords. We ask that you would bless this worship service on today, O oh God. Bless the man of God as he brings forth your word. Feed us manna from on high until we want no more. God, these are the blessings that we ask in thy loving son, Jesus' name. We'll be ever mindful to give you the praise. Amen. Come on, wherever you are in your house, just invite him to come into your bedroom, into your living room, into your kitchen. You're the king. Come on, say, and you're invited to come in. One more time before we move on to the next song. what you've been going through. Actually, I do know what you've been going through because I've been going through it too. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. But listen, we want to declare today, we lost some big people in our community this week. But guess what? Things are going to work out for our good. I just feel like God has something special for us coming on the way. Just hold your head up. Come on, Jarrell White, and sing this with us. Yeah. 
open your mouth and give God praise. And give God praise right where you are. If you know that he's working it out, if you know that he's giving you joy, that you can't be this joy that I have. The world can't give it and the world can't take it away. He's about to excel you. You have victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Every step that I take is about to be with me. I can leap over walls. I can run through truth. I can tread upon serpents. But better than that, greater is he. Greater is he. Greater is he. Because he's great, greater is he. working it out for my good and your good. Hope the worship, hope the prayers have inspired you and lifted you up this morning. And I'm speaking to you, whatever it is that you may be going through, we know that all things work together for the good of him that love the Lord and those that have been called according to his purpose. Hope you are enjoying the service. I know I am. Hey, I this is the part of the service where we want to welcome you, welcome you to St. Stephen Online on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Kevin W. Cosby and First Lady Barnetta Cosby. We want to welcome you to worship. I want to send a shout out to our Louisville campus, Southern Indiana campus, Hardin County, Dosker Manor, and all the viewers on our e-campus. Hey, and maybe you're joining us for the first time. We want you to just give us a wave, comment that it's your first time with us today because we want to welcome you specifically to St. Stephen Baptist Church because we're so glad you came to join us here. We know there's so many churches that you can choose from every Sunday morning that are streaming and even some having in person, but we're so glad that you joined us here today. But hey, I've seen a lot of comments, people asking if we're on YouTube. Unfortunately, due to a, a citywide internet outage, we've, we're unable to stream to YouTube today, but Facebook is our our primary um, means today so please if you know somebody that's trying to access through YouTube shoot them a quick text during this time let them know hey we're just gonna be on Facebook today but any way that you used to give in the past those methods are still available so at the time of giving we want to encourage you to continue to use the ways that you are used to giving amen but we know that God is working it out despite the that's internet right. issues he is still working it out for our good don't go anywhere now we're gonna welcome Pastor Mr. Ken, who is going to lead us. Simmons College of Kentucky presents the music stream of the summer Sunday, September 6th. Going live at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Brianna, say her name. In conjunction with the St. Stephen Music Department, paying tribute to a new generation of black activists who are changing the world. This epic virtual event will feature special guest appearances from Governor Andy Bashir, Dr. Kevin Cosby, Dr. Sam Tolbert, Killer Mike, Yvette Carnell, Antonio Moore, and Dr. Cornell West. Special musical guests include Jason Claver, Kevin B. James, Titus Robertson, and Dr. Mondre Moffitt. Don't miss the premiere song by Colette Bridgewater, paying special tribute to Brianna and a new generation of black activists. Sunday, September 6th, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Justice Concert of the Decade. Brianna, say her name. Morning, St. Stephen Church. It's giving time in the Lord's house, and it's giving time in your house as well. You know, I remember I was about seven years old the summer my grandmother taught me about the blessing pump. Now, my grandmother in her backyard, she had one of these old-fashioned, old-style pumps that, that you work the handle, and as you work the handle, then the water comes out the pump. 
So I was seven years old. I was in the backyard. I wanted to water the garden. I thought, I'm big enough to do this. So I went out and I grabbed the pump handle and I just started pumping it up and down, but nothing came out. All of my effort and there was nothing coming out. Well, my grandmother saw what was going on and she came up behind me with a little saucepan, just like this big, but it was full of water. And what she did was she poured it into the top of the pump. And, and, and I said, Grandma, what, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? And she said, well, here's how the, the, the blessing pump works. First of all, you're going to have to take a little bit of what it is that you want that's coming out of it. And you first thing is you pour that in first. And then you do your part, which is the handle. You got to do your part. And then the blessings flow out. So you got to prime it. You, you got to get it started. You start it with a little bit of what it is that you want. You want a little love out of life? You put a little love into it. You want a little generosity out? You put a little generosity into it. And then you do your part. And after, after you prime the pump and you do your part, then the blessings flow. And the blessings always flow thousands of times more than what it is that you put into it. That's the lesson of the blessing pump. And you know what? Your faith is the blessing pump that gets everything started. So whatever it is that you sow in to a ministry, whatever it is that you sow in in faith, God will multiply it. Let's bow for a word of prayer today as we approach the Lord with his tithe and our offerings. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, which is so powerful, your grace which magnifies each and every one of our efforts that's done on your behalf and in the name of your kingdom. So Lord, these gifts we want to use to prime the blessing pump. Help us to be a blessing near and far in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, St. Stephen. Amen. The lesson of the blessing pump from Pastor Ken. Are you guys ready to go ahead and do your part? Let's get ready to worship God in giving. Tyler. Hey, there's several ways that you can give conveniently here at St. Stephen. I know you're on Facebook watching us now, but you can still visit ssclive.tv and ssclive.org to give your tithes and offerings. Just visit those web addresses, and up in that upper right-hand corner, you'll see that giving button that we see every week. Click on that, type in the amount of your gift on the page that it directs you to, um, and then type in your debit or credit card information, and you can give on ssclive.tv or ssclive.org as well. You want to tell about how they can text to give. Text to give. All you have to do is text SSC Live to 77977. That's SSC Live to 77977. If it's your first time using this platform, wait for the prompts. It'll walk you through the process, and then that's how you can get in on giving. Yeah, so just open up a text message, and that phone number at the very top is 77977, and the message that you want to send is SSC Live, and click on that link when you get it back. Uh, PayPal is also an option for a convenient way to give. PayPal, we use it for day-to-day -day purchases. You can use it to give your tithes and offerings. Just visit ssclive.org, again, ssclive.org, and scroll to the bottom of every page on the church's website, and you'll see that yellow donate button that you see on your screen now. Click on that. And again, you'll be directed to another page where you can type in your, the amount of your gift and your debit and credit card information. Cash app is next. All you have to do is do the cash tag. There you see this right here. Cash tag dollar sign SSC Live 1. Dollar sign SSC Live 1. <laughs> hey, and maybe you don't want to use any of these convenient ways to give. You can mail in your tithes and offerings still. But again, we want to encourage you to use online methods as much as you can and learn it. And if you don't know how to use it, ask somebody to teach you how to use it. But maybe you want to mail in your tithes and offerings this week. Send it to St. Stephen Baptist Church to the attention of the trustees. The address here is 1018 South 15th Street, Louisville, Kentucky, 40210. All right. Thank you, Tyler, so much. You've seen all the ways that you can give. Whatever your platform, we thank you in advance for your good stewardship, your generosity, and sowing on this ground. Let's come together, give together, and don't go anywhere. Rev has a powerful word just for you. Let's return to service.
Praise God, you need a good memory so you never will forget what the Lord has done for you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I am so sorry that we're not uh, broadcasting on all of our platforms, and that is because anything that humankind creates can break down. That's why we trust God, because whatever God creates never breaks down. But we're thankful that we're on YouTube, and um, help us get the word out that uh, we are broadcasting our worship service today on YouTube. I want to thank God for our music ministry. They have 
lifted our spirits today as they always do. May the Lord replenish them as they have replenished us. This morning, I want to give a special shout out to various persons on our particular campuses, on the Hardin County campus. Uh, our prayers are with Pam Panita Davis, Sister Panita, who leads the Royal Senior Citizens Ministry. Uh, she's been hospitalized a few times and uh, in the f past few weeks, and we want to lift her up on the wings of prayer. We want to say uh, to Sister Jacqueline Collins, uh, who's a part of the chapel choir, happy birthday to you, Sister Jacqueline. May the Lord bless you with many more birthdays. On our Louisville campus, uh, I want to ask that you would remember one of our good members, uh, a loving woman who loves God, loves her church, a committed wife, uh, Sister Sheila Eves, uh, her mother, uh, Sister Akil Akila Campbell, uh, is very ill, and they are ministering to uh, her mother, both Jerry, my good friend, and Sheila. Uh, she, uh, Sheila's mother uh, was and is her rock. And so, Sheila, we want you to know that you're in our hearts and our thoughts. Also, one of the kindest woman, women in this church, uh, just um, she personifies what it means to be a good Christian. That's Sister Diane Harbin, whom I love, just an encourager, a nurturer, and very brilliant. And I want her to know, Diane, that we're praying for you with the homegoing of our member, your brother, Robert Allen. You talk about a man who was committed to his task as a greeter. Everyone needs a smile, you know? Everyone needs a word of encouragement. And when you come to church, you don't need a whole lot of Debbie Downers. And um, brother Robert Allen, my God, what a great greeter he was. Even when he wasn't feeling well, he still would come on in here with his cane and walk and greet people and let people know how welcome they were in the house of God. And uh, we are thankful that God blessed us with Robert. And Diane, we want you to know we are all family, and we love you, and you're in our thoughts and our prayers. My wife would have me to tell you, Diane, that she really loves you and is thinking of you as well. Also, we want to pray for Ann and Charles Johnson. Uh, their aunt, Frances Merriweather, passed Friday night. And Charles, we love you. We're praying for you. Special shout out also to the greeter who always greets with a smile. And that is Sister Terry Grice. God bless you. Thinking of you. Happy anniversary to Michelle and Jeffrey Jones. 33 years. God bless you, Michelle. God bless you, Jeffrey. What a wonderful couple. Those are two persons who are always always trying to make other people better. Michelle is just that kind of woman. She just says, what can, it's almost like, she, what can I do to make the people around me better? And so, Michelle, may the Lord bless you. Jeffrey, God bless you, my brother. You're my brother. Love you. Appreciate you. Also, happy birthday to one of the finest, most won wonderful, most beautiful women in St. Stephen Church, and that's Miss Sister Catherine Seawright who will turn 79 years old on Tuesday. God bless you. Boy, Brother C. Wright sure is proud of his wife. They've been married since Abraham Lincoln was a precinct captain in the state of Kentucky. That's how long they've been married and committed to each other. Love your sister, Catherine C. Wright. Also, happy birthday to Gabriel Brooks. Gabriel, one of our dedicated, committed, dependable ushers. Happy birthday to you, Gabriel. Happy birthday to Miss St. Stephen. She has the crown. It's Miss St. Stephen. That's Sister Kim Lee. Kim Lee has her hand in so much as St. Stephen Church, and I can just hear her now. Oh, Pastor, you don't have to do that. You don't have to say that. Yes, we do have to say that to you because we love you. You're our sister. We're family. We, you mean so much to us. Have a good day, Kim. Happy birthday to you. And also on our Indiana campus, happy anniversary, celebrating 40 years of marriage. And that is T.A. and Vernita Spalding. <laughs> happy 
anniversary to you. I always celebrate um, the accomplishments of our members, and we have a member here at St. Stephen Church, and uh, she's very gifted, but I didn't know she had the gift of a scribe, and that is Sister Cassandra Lanier, part of the Lanier family, part of the Robbie Henry family, and all of those Lanier's who have made St. Stephen Church what it is, and Cassandra has written this wonderful book, which is her life odyssey, which is, oh my God, it's just a profound book, and I'll keep it on my desk, and uh, Cassandra Lanier, it's entitled My Life Under the Sunshine, S-O-N, not S-U-N, Under the Sunshine, amen, and Cassandra, congratulations on this book, and if you're looking for a, a good inspirational book, then I highly recommend it. It is absolutely well written, well thought out, and uh, it's a great, great memoir. So Cassandra, a member of St. Stephen Church, been in St. Stephen all her life, and we celebrate your accomplishment as a writer and as an author. God bless your hearts. Now, let's look at God's Word together. Take out your message notes and get your, download your message notes. And... Um, I want to share a thought with you. We're continuing this series with David. We have just one more message in, in this series. And I'm trying to pull out because David, uh, King David, is the most documented person in the Bible. So there's a whole lot. I could do a series on David next, next year and not exhaust all of the material that we find in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, about David. But I want to look at the last chapter of 2 Samuel chapter 24, in which David is a much older man. And um, we've been looking at David from the time he was a teenager to the time that he defeated Goliath, and now he is an old man. And the message is entitled, When the Hand Comes Down. When the Hand Comes Down. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, for every name that has been mentioned, for all of those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, for those um, who have health challenges, and for those who have reason to rejoice, we ask, O oh Lord, that you bless those who are hurting. I ask, O oh Lord, that you continue to lift up those who are inspired and rejoicing. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the accomplishments of Cassandra, and help us all, O oh Lord, to work while it's day, for the night is coming when no one can work. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is a long chapter, so I'm not going to read the entire 25 verses, but I would like to read some selected verses. Let's begin with 2 Samuel chapter 24. And let's read the first three verses. Now again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. And it incited David against them to say, Go number Israel and Judah. The king said to Joab, the commander of the army who was with him, Go about now to all the tribes from Dan, that's way up in the north, to Beersheba. That's way down in the south. And register people that I may know the number of the people. So it's a census, numbering the people. But Joab said to the king, Now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are, while the eyes of my Lord the king still see. But why does my Lord, the king, delight in this thing? Look at verse 8. So when they had gone about through the whole land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. So it took them about 10 months to conduct all the, the census. And Joab gave the number of the registration of the people to the king, and there were in Israel, 800,000 valiant men who drew the sword, and the men of Judah were 500,000 uh, men. 
So they were taking the census in order to institute a draft. So this is a census for the purpose of drafting men. So David has in mind of creating a standing army. <laughs> Verse 10. Now, now David's heart troubled him after he had numbered the people. So David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in what I have done, but now, O Lord, please take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. When David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and speak to David. Thus the Lord says, I am offering you three things. Choose for yourself one of them which I will do to you. So Gad came to David and told him and said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land, or will you flee three months before your foes? Will they pursue you? Or shall there be three days of pestilence in your land? Now consider and see what answer I shall return to him who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Let us now fall into the hands of the Lord, for he is merciful, he, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hands of man. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel from the morning until the appointed time, and 70,000 men of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. When the angel, here's the verse that I want you to focus on with me. When the angel stretched out his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the calamity. Let me read that again. The Lord relented from COVID-19 and said to the angel who destroyed the people, it is enough. Now relax your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. When the hand comes down and God said to this angel who was God's agent of judgment for the sins of David and the nation, God says, relax your hand. Hold your hand. Don't let the hand of judgment come down. Now, 2 Samuel chapter 24 is a strange story. As many of these stories that we've been looking at in the life of David, it's a strange story. God is punishing David and God is punishing Israel for taking a census. Now, what is so contradictory about this is that God is punishing David for taking a census that we are told that God motivated and incited David to take. Look at verse 1 again. It says, Now the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and it incited David against them to say, Go number Israel uh, and Judah. So God is the one that incited David to take the census, and then God turns around and is angry at David and punishes David and the nation of Israel for that which God incited David to do. That seems, and it is, from our lens, from our perspective, it is contradictory. And in the parallel story to this story that is found in the book of First Chronicles, the writer seems to see the contradiction and, and, and edits what really took place from a divine perspective. There's an edit that takes place. And in First Chronicles 21 and verse 1, we are told, then Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. So that even raises another dilemma. The first dilemma is why would God punish Israel for taking a census and he, God is the one who incited David to take the census. And then to clean it up, the writer of First Chronicles says, no, it wasn't God, it was Satan. I will never forget when I was in the, the, the home of Muhammad Ali. In fact, it was at his mother's house. And we were talking about the Bible. And uh, the champ uh, asked me to explain this 
because like all religions, um, his faith had given him contradictions that he would use against Christians to show the supremacy of the Koran over the Christian Bible. So he asked me to explain this because there's some other contradictions in terms of how many people were counted when you read First Chronicles' account and Second Samuel's account. So which was it? Was it God who incited David to do the census, or was it Satan who incited David to do the census? Here's the answer. Both. Both. Which is to say that Satan did it. Satan incited David. And might I add that Satan incited David to take the census because David wanted to take the census. Satan does not incite us to do that which we are not inclined to do. Um, Satan only incites us to do that which is in us to do. But while Satan incited it, God was still sovereign, which means that God controls Satan, and Satan can only do that which God permits Satan to do. And you know that from the book of Job, because while Job in, is, is tormented by Satan, God has Satan on a leash and says, okay, Satan, you can, you can bring heavy-duty misery to Job, but you cannot take his life. Uh, God has to, uh, Satan has to get permission. And so God is in control. And it seems contradictory if you, if you um, try to deny it, or if you try to understand it. If you try to understand this, you'll lose your, your mind because you can't. If you deny it, you, you, you might lose your salvation. Well, I don't think you lose your salvation. But this is the way I can explain it. Here's, here, let, me, let me put it this way. God is sovereign. God is in control. You and I have freedom. But while you and I have freedom, God is still control, in control. And regardless of how we use or misuse our freedom, God is still going to use whatever we do, good or bad. He's, God's going to weave it into God's divine plan to ultimately get us and society and this world where God wants it to be. Now, let me see if I can illustrate what I mean. And all illustrations break down to some degree, but I think this kind of illustrates it. And I hope you can remember this when you're trying to explain how we have human freedom, but God is in control. Ultimately, we may think we're in control because we have freedom, but ultimately God's will prevails. Um, I live on the river, on the Ohio River. And the Ohio River, if you ever look at the river, it is not, it is not stagnant. It's not sedentary. It is moving, and it is moving downstream. The pull of gravity is pulling the river. As you see it, the currents are pulling the river downstream between its banks. So it's moving south, and it will dump ultimately into the Mississippi River. That's the destiny of the Ohio River. The destiny is the Mississippi. Now, in that river, there are fish. And from the perspective of the fish, the fish would, if I were to ask those fish, fish, are you free to swim wherever you want to swim? Those fish will say, we are free. Look, I can swim over here. I can swim over here. I'm free to do what I want to do. But what the fish don't understand is while, yes, they are free, they cannot change the course and the direction of the river which is to say while they're swimming, they may think they're free, and in a sense, they are free. But the river is still moving them in their freedom, pushing them down, whether they realize it or not, 
to the Mississippi River because the destiny of the Ohio River is the Mississippi River. So regardless of how much freedom those fish have, they're ultimately going to end up where the river is supposed to end up. And regardless of how much freedom we think we have, God is in, the, in control of the currents of human history. And God is the one that is pushing history in a certain direction because we have freedom as the fish, but God controls the current of history, pushing us to where God wants us to be. So Satan incites David to take a census. God permits it because God's going to take even the bad things that are done to God's ultimate purposes. And it took 10 months, they went from Dan way up in the north to Beersheba way in the south, and they counted every one. And as a result of the count, they were able to identify 1.3 million recruits for David's army because the purpose of the census was to discover how many eligible men could we recruit to serve as army people? And after the 10 months was over with, and after they had done their, calcul their calculations, had counted all the people, they come to David and they say, David, we completed the task. You, we have 1.3 million soldiers, which is a big army. And when David hears the number, instead of congratulating Joab, whom he put over the, the, the census, his general Joab, who was a, uh, who was a checkered individual. He was a rascal, Joab was. But instead of congratulating Joab, um, David suddenly says to himself, I've done wrong. In fact, listen to what he says in verse 10. Now David's heart troubled him after he had numbered the people. So David said, I have sinned greatly. Please notice um, the adverb, greatly. He says, I have sinned. I just haven't sinned, but I have sinned greatly. Now, when we think of David's great sins, if I were to ask you, what was David's great sin? You would automatically say that David's great sin was when he took uh, Uriah, the Hittite's wife, Bathsheba, and had Uriah killed. But when David confessed that sin in 2 Samuel chapter 12 and verse 13, this is what he said after confronted by Nathan the prophet. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned. So David acknowledged his sin. And he just, but he just said, I have sinned. But when he numbered the people and realized what he had done wrong, he just didn't say, I have sinned. He said, I have sinned greatly. I have really messed up numbering the people. Now, now why is it that taking a census from David's perspective after they had counted the people and once he received the number that there was 1.3 million potential soldiers, that David says, I have sinned greatly. Is it because God is an anti-census God? We, we know that God is not an anti-census God because we have a book in the Bible named Census. Did you know there's a book in the Bible named Census? The book of the Bible named Census is the fourth book of the Bible. The fourth book of the Bible is the book of Numbers. Do you know why it's called the book of Numbers? You know there's Leviticus between the book of Numbers. But really Exodus, or Numbers, is a real extension to the book of Exodus. It's like a month apart. Exodus ends a month later, you pick up in Numbers. There's just right... In between is Leviticus, but Numbers and Exodus really should go together. But do you know why it's called Numbers? Well, Numbers chapter 1 tells us 
Verse 1 says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, the tent of the meeting, on the first of the second month, in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation. Of all the, of all the congregation, take a census. God tells them to take a census. According, look, they said, by their father's household according to the number. And they're going to take a census. And there's two censuses. You read it in Numbers chapter 1, and then in Numbers chapter 26, uh, you read the same thing. Verse, uh, uh, it says, I think it's verse 9. Or anyway, take a census. Verse 2, take a census of all the congregation, the sons of Israel, 20 years and and upward. So, so we've got a book in the Bible called the Book of Census or the Book of Numbers. And the reason it's called the Book of Numbers is because there's a census. But I only do to know that all do we know that God's not an is not an anti-census God because there's a book in the Bible called the Book of Census. But we know that's not a that God is not opposed to numbering and data because Jesus took a last lunch of two fish and five loaves of bread and fed over 5,000 people. It says there were 5,000 men. How do we know that there were 5,000 men at, at that event? We know there was 5,000 men because somebody had to number them. Somebody had to, to count. This is how many people there are. We know God's not opposed to numbering because in the book of Acts, we are told that uh, when, they, when the church first started, that there was 120 charter members of the Jerusalem church. And on the day of Pentecost, there was um, uh, even, we're told that there were 3,000 souls that were added to the church. How do we know that there were 120? Because somebody numbered them. How do we know that when Peter opened up the doors of the church, that 3,000 souls joined because somebody numbered them? God is not an anti-numbering God. God is not an anti-census God, and that's important because right now, this year, we're taking a census in America according to this is a, the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States requires that a census be taken every 10 years. That is a part of the Constitution. Initially, black people in America they were not going to count us in the census because we could not be citizens. But they compromised, and black people who were enslaved were put down as three-fifths of a person for purposes of counting how many people are in these United, hate, I mean United States of America, which it was. The United Hates, and it's becoming even more today. Instead of the United States, it is becoming the United Hates of America. Now, we are in a census today, and the census, the counting of, of how many people are in communities, the census will end September the 30th. There are several things that we as good citizens, especially uh, black Americans, must do, and that is, number one, we must register to vote, and secondly, we must be counted in the census. And the reason we need to be counted in the census is because the census, fill in the blank, determines how much in resources and how much in representation a community gets. Every year, we are undercounted and because we are undercounted, we don't get proper representation and we don't get proper resources to community that are in desperate need of those resources. So it is critically important that we find Lottie Dottie and everybody and make sure that they are a part of the census because God is not an anti-census God. So if God is not an anti-census God, and you can see throughout the Bible where God told them to number, there's a book called the Book of Numbers. Jesus fed 5,000 plus because they numbered them. The early church started off with 120 charter members because they numbered them. The church grew from 3,000 to 5,000 because 
they were numbered. So why then did God punish David? And why did David come to the realization that after he had taken the census, that he had committed not just the sin, but he said, I have sinned greatly. Well, look with me, my friends, at verse 3 once again, and I think it helps answer that question. It says, but Joab said to the king, now may the Lord your God add to the people a hundred times as many as they are while the eyes of the Lord the king still see. In other words, he knows that David is getting old, and he says, before you go blind, I hope that the Lord will, will, will cause an explosion of population in Israel from Dan to Bathsheba. But then he asked the, the king a question. He asked David a question. I, I, I want to see Israel prosper, king. But why does the Lord, the king, delight in this thing? Why does the king delight in this thing? Underline, if you're taking notes, the word delight. Why do you delight in the census? And that word delight literally means pride. Why do you take pride in the census? See, David's sin with Bathsheba, when he took Bathsheba, was a sin of passion. Passion, his passions got the best of him. But David's sin, which was the great sin with the senses, was the sin of pride. And the reason why pride is always the great sin is because pride, according to the great C.S. Lewis, is the mother of all sins. Any sin you commit, it, what is foundational to that sin is pride. Why do people steal? Because they, they, they have pride and they, they want stuff pride. Why do we tear each other apart? Because we feel threatened by people and our pride is hurt. So pride is the mother of all sins. And what David is doing, he's numbering the, 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 the people and the soldiers so that he can say, look what I have accomplished. Before I was king and when Saul, my predecessor, was king, we did not have this many people. We were not this advanced. We didn't have this much resources. So he numbered them so that he could boast and brag about what he had accomplished. And not only did he do it to boast, but he also did it because as he got older, he felt insecure. And he felt that maybe some enemy like the Philistines or some other neighbor who may have been hostile to Israel would come after Israel, realizing that he is declining. And so he builds an army because he's delighting in his human strength. He's delighting in his soldiers. He's delighting um, in his military might, in his militarism. And he's delighting. Now, that's not the old David. The old David did not delight in military strength. His delight was in the law of the Lord. In fact, Psalm 20 verse 7 says, Some boast in chariots and some boast in horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. In other words, what David said when he was at his spiritual best, when he was a spiritual giant, that what I take pride in, what I delight in, is not chariots and not horses, but I delight in the grace of God. It is the grace of God that has brought me from the time that I was a nobody in Bethlehem. It was the grace of God that gave me victory over uh, Goliath. It was the grace of God that protected me when King Saul was trying to wipe me out for 10 years. It was the grace of God who has done it. And now he's pivoting from the grace of God and putting his trust in flesh, putting his trust in chariots and putting his trust in, in soldiers and armies. You know, you could update this. 
where the writer says some boast in chariots and some boast in horses. And we could apply this to the United States government. Instead of being a government that promotes justice, our budget and in in our militarism, the military-industrial complex of this United States of America, and the militarization of the police departments in our urban areas suggests to us that some trust in tanks and some trust in bombers and some trust in the militarization of the police department. That's what we delight in in this country. We delight in militarism. We don't delight in uh, monies for schools and buildings for schools and budgets to educate and, and uh, uh, lowering ladders of opportunity into distressed neighborhoods. No, we boast in tanks. We boast in bombers. And then somebody else, I can make it more personal. Some of you can go home and look at the brand new house that you had. And when you were living in an apartment, you were cool. You worshiped the Lord. You came to church. You sung in the choir. But now that you got this nice house, some boast in their home and some boast in their car. What do you boast in? Well, we can look at St. Stephen Church or any other church and we can see all of our technology and look at all the technology. Look at all the wizard wit we have. We've got a, uh, we've got a television station. And we can get to the point where we can say some boast in our technology and some boast in our wizardry and some boast in our in our our in our broadcast ssc live tv but you know internets break down and anything you boast in other than god if you if you were out of shape and all of a sudden you've been lifting weights and you 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 look good like i do <laughs> that was Jason. If you lift weights and all of a sudden you're looking good, you can say, ooh, look in the mirror and you say, look, I boast in my muscles. But if you boast in your muscles and in your strength, even the Black Panther who controls Wakanda can get sick. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. And if you're going to boast on anything, boast to, uh, that song just keeps coming to my mind, to God be the glory. You know, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. David said, I have sinned. His conscience got to him and said, I have sinned because I'm delighting not in God. I'm delighting in my chariots. Don't delight in anything but God. COVID can shut it down. I got a car in my driveway, and I can't drive it because I haven't, don't, there's nowhere to go. And, every, I gotta, and I forget to start, and you got to get it, uh, uh, the battery charged. You got clothes you can't wear. Things you boast in can shut down. Everything can shut down. Health can shut down. If you're going to take into the light, boast in God. So what was David's sin? David's sin was the sin of idolatry. It was the sin of putting an army where God needs to be. And this is the last chapter of 2 Samuel. And it's interesting because it seemed like the, that the last part of 2 Samuel is a repeat of the first part of Second of, of First Samuel, because in the first part of First Samuel, the people say, "We don't want Samuel. We want a king to be like the other nations." And Samuel says, "You got a king. You got a king who's 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 Yahweh." And it said, "Well, he's invisible. Yahweh is invisible. We want a king that we can see." And so they get a king named Saul. So they're boasting in Saul, and Saul proved to be a disappointment. And then at the end, David is saying the same thing. I used to delight in God, but now I'm delighting in my army. Don't let anything substitute for God. I delight in God. And David realized he's a sin. He has sinned. And God 
says, yes, you have sinned. And God sends a prophet because sin must be dealt with. God sends a prophet named Gad. God sends Gad. God sends Gad. Now you're thinking, what happened to Nathan? Well, Nathan's in retirement. He's Gad's the new brother. He's the new brother. He's the rookie prophet now. He's the man, because this is late, remember, in David's reign. And here's a new prophet named Gad. So that's a little trivial stuff that, that, you know, if we were to take a test. I know if we were to take a test on this story, I would ask you the question, what was David's great sin? And you'd be able to tell me what's his great sin. If I asked you, name me two great prophets that God sent to David. You should be able to say Nathan. You should be able to say Gad. And Nathan comes to David and says, let me tell you what, you've sinned and God has given you some, here's three choices of punishment. And this, by the way, is the only time you will read in the Bible where someone gets to choose their punishment. Please remember that because you don't get to choose in life the consequences of your actions. You can choose what you want to do, but you don't choose what the consequences are going to be. And even the consequences that David is given are dire consequences. He says, now here's the consequences, David. You've got a choice. You can have three years of famine, or you can have three months of running from your enemies. So they're going to be pursuing you, like maybe it could be the Philistines. You've got to run for them for three months. Or you can have three days of an epidemic, a COVID-19, for three days. I'm going to let you have COVID-19 for three days, and I'm going to let you have COVID-19 because I am in charge. I am in control. And to prove, since you've taken the census and you think this is all about you, I'm going sh- I'm to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send something. I'm going to let COVID-19, an epidemic, come. And David thought about it. He said, three years of a famine, three months of running from my enemies, or three days of an epidemic that God sent. And then we are told David makes his choice in verse 14. David said to Gad, Gad who comes from God, I am in great distress. You know, if I were David, I would have said one, two, three, none of the above. But David has to choose and says, let us now fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hands of man. In other words, don't let my enemies pursue me because when my enemies come to punish me, they are motivated. Listen carefully. This is a very important point, especially for parents or anyone who has to do the work of discipline. Listen that when enemies punish you, They're doing it out of vindictiveness. They're doing it to hurt you. When God punishes us and takes us to the woodshed, God does not punish us out of vindictiveness. God punishes us to improve us. When your enemies are trying to punish you, they're not trying to punish you to improve you. They're punishing you to wipe you out. God punishes you out of love to make you better, which is important in parenting. If you discipline your children, make sure that it's not motivated by anger. It's not motivated by vindictiveness. But, you're, but it, you're, it's motivated out of love because you want your child to be de- better. And God, David says to, to Gad, Gad, tell God that I want him to punish me because he's, he's merciful. But whatever you do, don't put me in the hands of them haters. 
Don't put me in the hands of folk because folk are mean and cruel. Let God punish me. And God does it. And you, 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 you saw the census. 1.3 million men could be eligible for <laughs> David's, David's uh, uh, army. But then when God sends an angel with judgment, verse 15 says, verse 15 says, so, so God sent a pestilence. God sent COVID-19. Uh, God sent a pandemic. And it was a pandemic, uh, you know, pan, all, pan. It was a pandemic. So God sent a pandemic in Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and 70,000 men were killed. 70,000 men were killed. But I'm telling you, God was using it to teach them. In fact, Psalm 119 says this. Listen to Psalm 119. It says, my troubles turned out for my best. Listen to me. My troubles turned out for my best. They forced me to learn from your textbook. You know, God, as a result of my trouble, I learned some things, which is the reason why God punishes us. Truth from your mouth means more to me than striking it rich in a gold mine. Verse 71 again says, uh, verse 71 says, my troubles turned out all for the best. They forced me to learn. In other words, as I said, when God punishes us, it's a punishment for the purpose of helping us learn and do better. It's not motivated out of vindictiveness. Please fill in the blanks very quickly. Whenever God allows trouble to come in your life, God lets trouble come in your life. God will send some angel to punish us because God is trying to do one of five things very quickly. God uses punishment to direct us. In other words, God will let some trouble come in our lives because God's trying to push us to some place we would not normally or naturally go if it were not for the punishment. And that is why when you look back over your life and you see something that you didn't like that happened, you can say, I didn't like it at the time, but that crisis is what directed me to where I am right now because God uses trouble to direct us and then put this down, God uses trouble to inspect us. When God's getting ready to take you to another level, God always inspects you to see if you are ready for it. And the way God inspects us is through trouble. So you're sitting there crying because of some trouble. Could it be that God is using the trouble to inspect you to see how mature you are, how you handle things? And then God uses trouble to correct us. Like he's, he, he's correcting us so that uh, God will say, no, you're going in the wrong direction, so I got to correct you. But it's not to hurt us, but to correct us. And then God uses trouble, put it down to perfect us. As a result of the trouble, uh, it builds character. It builds endurance. We, we, realized, we didn't realize how strong we really were. It made us uh, pull on some reserves that we didn't know we had. It made us pray more. It perfected us. But then this is what's going to blow your mind. It's not just that God uses trouble to direct us and inspect us and correct us and perfect us, but God uses trouble to protect us. In other words, God lets something bad happen to stop us from continuing into something that would end up at much worse. See, it might look bad that God allowed 70,000 to die. But had David had his way and had David had his army and had David done what other kings had done, and that is expand his borders with militarism, then not just 70,000 will die, but perhaps thousands upon thousands of hundreds of thousands could die, which would later take place. Why would the northern kingdom be destroyed because of war with the Assyrians in 722 B.C. So sometimes God lets something bad happen to keep us from something worse happening. Some of you are crying right now because maybe somebody disappointed you or someone you believed in proved to be 
a false friend and you're hurt. Well, you should be thanking God that you found out now before you got too deep involved in them. It's, and so, so that person who proved to be fake and took some money from you, well, even, let's say it's $100. Be thankful that it was $100 because you were so blind that if they had stayed with you just one more year, excuse me, one more month, but let me tell you, they would have had the deed to your house. They would have had the deed to your car. And so sometimes God lets trouble come in to protect us from going down a path that could ultimately destroy us. You know, 70,000 people died. And God was being merciful to allow 70,000 people to die. Now, some of you are going to say, well, 70,000 people, well, what about the innocent? David's the one that took the census. What about the innocent? Well, let me answer that. None of them were innocent. None of them. Just like when bad things happened to us, and we say, well, I was innocent. Well, in a way, yes. But in a way, no. See, when you really get to understand God and yourself, you don't ask questions like, God, why do bad things happen to good people? Because you, when you really understand who you are and who God is, you don't ask why bad things happen to good people. You know why you don't ask that? Because there's no good people. We all are bad. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. Instead of asking why does bad things happen to good people, the question you should be asking every day is why does good things happen to bad people? That's, that's what you should be asking. In other, words, in other words, why, God, have you been so good to me? And I don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve it. You know you don't deserve it. But yet God is so good to us. And we don't deserve it. And that is why David said, let me be in the hands of God because God is merciful. Instead of David being upset, David said, what am I doing being king in the first place? I was a nobody. I was a shepherd in Bethlehem. But look at me. I'm the king now. I didn't deserve it, but God has been good to me. So we're told that this angel, God says, send this angel. It's almost like what happened in the book of Exodus when God sent a death angel to punish the recalcitrant and stubborn Pharaoh. God sends this angel uh, to Israel from Dan to Beersheba, and he starts way up there in Dan, and he's making his way down, and there's all on the news. More people are dying because of, of Israel's COVID-19. The number keeps climbing, and I don't care how many masks they wear. I don't care if they, if they shelter in place. I don't care how much they wash their hands. People are dying because of sin, because of judgment, and it's starting at Dan, and it's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down until now it is near Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is the capital city. It is the city of David, and people are wondering, well, we're going to have to evacuate, but right when, right when the death angel who had killed 70 was about to wipe out Jerusalem. Watch God. When the angel, verse 16 says, stretched out his hand towards Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord, Yahweh, relented of the calamity, said to the angel who destroyed the people, it's enough. Relax your hand. Hold your hand back. That's why I've been tired of this message. When the Lord, when the hand comes down, he says, hold your hand. You've already put your hand down on 70,000, but now hold your hand back. It's like, a, like grace was holding that angel's hand back. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aaron Una, the Jebusite, 
In other words, God relents. God says, hold your hand. And the only reason God said to the angel, hold your hand, is because David had it right. If I've got to be punished. Let me be punished these three days by God. Because God, he said, is merciful. God is merciful. And that's what Scripture teaches us. When we think about whatever suffering we have, we should be telling ourselves, you know what? It could be worse. And the only reason why it's not worse is because God is merciful. When, when the Babylonians came and destroyed Jerusalem, and the writer of Lamentations was, was, was reflecting on all of the tragedy and the pain of war, of being decimated by the by the dreaded Babylonians, the writer of Lamentations says, in Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 19, the writer uh, says, remembering my affliction and my misery and my wormwood and gall, that's bitterness. When I remember my bitterness and my wormwood and my gall, when I remember all the things, the bad things that happened, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled, stop here, in me. In other words, when I think about all that happened, how we were wiped out, how we were decimated, my soul, my nephesh, myself, uh, was humbled, and I started saying something to myself. This is good soul talk. He, he says, this is what I recall to mind. Therefore, as bad as things are, what I am thinking about, which brings me hope, is the following. He said, it is of, of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. In other words, we lost 70,000, but Jerusalem could have been wiped out. But it's only because of the Lord's mercies that we're not completely wiped out. And I don't care how bad things turn out in your life. It is only by God's mercy and him holding the angel's hand back that we are not just completely wiped out. We're not completely consumed. It's not because we're so good. It's because God is good because his compassions, one thing you can always depend on, you can't depend on this with folk, but one thing you can always depend on with God is that God is a compassionate God and his compassions, listen to me, they fail not, never will fail. There never will be a day that they fails. Internets fail. People fail. Folk you put your hope in fails. Job fails. Economies fail. But one thing that will not fail, and that is the compassions of God, how compassionate God is and how God is concerned about you, and God never leaves you, and God hurts when you hurt. He never fails. In fact, he says, he says, here's, here it is, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That God is faithful, and God holds back the angel, and David looked and said, oh, my God, that angel should have wiped me out. He wiped out 70. In fact, I'm the one that took the census. But God held the angel's hand. And listen, you'll never understand this. You will never understand this if you don't stop to ask yourself, where was that angel? When God told him to hold your hand, if you if you, you got to get this, it, we're, we're told if if, if go go back, it, it says uh, it, he says now the, relax your hand, and the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. So when he was by the threshing floor of the uh, Jebusite Aruna, and he was getting ready right outside Jerusalem to wipe out. Jerusalem, where David was, God said, hold your hand. Hold your hand. And, 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 and you got to understand why that's significant. Because in the parallel story of this, you find that in 2 Chronicles chapter 3, verse 1, 
many years later, Solomon, David's son, it says, so Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared to David, his father. The temple was built <laughs> on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite, the site that David had selected. In other words, the very place where God told the angel to hold his hand. David said, now this is where we're going to build the temple. And it's also, it was on Mount Moriah. Now I need some Sunday school students right now. If I got some Sunday school students who are hearing this, uh, I know <laughs> some Sunday school students who are hearing this know that if it says that, that Aruna's uh, threshing floor was Mount Moriah, then if you've been to Sunday School 101, you know what Mount Moriah is. Mount Moriah is the place where God told uh, Abraham to take your son up to Mount Moriah. Uh, I wish I had the first verse, and it would say it in the Genesis chapter 22, verse 1. It says, take your son, your only son, the son whom thou love, in verse 1, and says, and take him to a mountain. Take him to Mount Moriah, Aruna's threshing floor. And he says, I want you to offer him as a burnt sacrifice under me. And, and you remember the story? It says, now, uh, 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 it, it says, and so now it came to pass after these things, the God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And verse 2, do you have it? Verse 2 uh, says, well, it's, it's there. He says, take him up. There it is. And take now your son, your only son whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. That's, that's the ruinous threshing floor. Go to Mount Moriah. That's where the temple was built. And offered Isaac up as an offering to me. And Abraham was about to do it. But verse 12 says, Genesis 12 says, and he said, do not stretch out your hand against this land or do him, do nothing to harm him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. In other words, when, when, when Abraham was getting ready to take that, that hand and stick that knife into Isaac, God held his hand right there on Mount Moriah. And many years later, when, watch this, when the angel was getting ready to wipe out Jerusalem at this very place where God held his hand, told him to hold your hand, so that Isaac won't die, God says to the same angel, angel, I want you to do a repeat. I want you to hold your hand. And instead of wiping out Jerusalem, I want you to be merciful and be compassionate. And my brothers and my sisters, let me tell you something. You and I have not gotten the punishment we deserve. We have messed up over and over again. And don't look at your neighbor. Don't look at anyone else. Look at yourself. Look at how many times you've blown it, how many times you've messed up. But, and you, sh you and I should have been wiped out. But when the angel was getting ready to lower his hand, God said, angel, Hold your hand. And it didn't happen. You, you know, you, you should just shout because of the things you know should have happened and didn't happen because God held his hand. And, 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 and he kept on holding his hand. And can I tell you why he kept on holding his hand? Because at this same place, watch this. He says, I'm going to hold, Isaac, I'm going to give you some grace. I'm going to, look, Isaac, I'm going to let Abraham hold his hand. Look, David, I'm going to let the angel hold his hand so it won't uh, destroy Jerusalem. Look, 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 Solomon, uh, you should be wiped out, but I'm going to have the angel hold his hand. Look, Ezekiel, I, you should be wiped out. Look, Jeremiah, look, Isaiah, look, Micah, look, Nahum, look, Habakkuk, look, Zephaniah, I'm going to hold my hand. 
And God held his hand. And God held his hand. Somebody's got to pay for sin. Somebody's got to pay for the mess up. Somebody's got to pay for the senses. God says, angel, hold your hand. I'm going to get somebody to pay. And Jesus came down 42 generations, went to that place called Aruna. And when Jesus got up on that cross, that's when God said, now, angel, lower your hand. And the angel lowered his hand on Jesus because he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him. And upon with his stripes, I am healed. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So God held his hand until Jesus came. God lowered his hand and killed Jesus so that every sin we commit has been paid for, not by you. David, you don't have to pay for it. Solomon, you don't have to pay for it. Isaac, you don't have to pay for it. Sinner, you don't have to pay for it. Jesus paid it all. Now, let me tell you something. I can tell when you've really heard the gospel. You can tell when you've heard the gospel because when you hear a lecture, this is what happens. You, you, you can always tell when you hear a lecture because when you hear a lecture, people with their Bibles open. It's good. You need to hear some lectures and people are taking notes and they're writing down points and writing them down. You can see all their notes and they're typing things on their, on their Mac or their iPad because that's what you do when you heard a lecture. And let me tell you what you do when you heard a, vo- a um, motivational speech. When you heard a motivational speech, then you always write down action steps. Okay, this is what I'm going to do because I have heard something that motivates me, and here are going to be my action steps. But let me tell you how you can tell when you've heard the gospel. When you've really heard the gospel and know that you should have been wiped out and God held the hand back and God took your punishment, you just don't take information in notes. When you've really heard the gospel, the sign that you really understand the gospel is you, you worship. You, 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 thank you, God. You, you, hallelujah, Jesus. You, you have a flashback and you know that you should have been wiped out, but God has given you grace that God has kept you and kept your family and kept you these many years and you got another birthday and you got a house to live in. And you got cars to drive and clothes on your back at a reasonable portion of health and strength. You don't take notes. You holler. You lift your hands and say, thank you, God, for all you've done for me, for giving me another chance. So let me close by asking you, what do you delight in? Do you delight in your money? Do you delight in your health? Do you light in your car? Some folk would rather have houses and land. Some folk choose silver and gold. These things that they treasure and forget about their souls. I've decided to make Jesus my choice because when the hand should have come down, God said, let's just hold that hand back. And God has held the hand of judgment back on all of us And that's why we're here, and that's why we worship, because of how good God has been to me. All things do work together for good for those that love the Lord. Things will work out for you, and they will work out for me. I'm going to ask you to pray with me wherever you may be. 
Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word this morning. And thank you, O Lord, for your goodness to us. And thank you, O Lord, that for all the blessings that you have showered us with, but never allow us to delight in these things, for these things break down. Help us to delight in you and help us to rejoice that our names are written in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto us. Lord, what a great gospel. What a great gospel that we are the, the beneficiaries of, the recipients of. If anybody asks us, oh God, why we are saved, help us to say without reservation, it's because God held his hand back and then lowered his hand at, for G, when Jesus got on the cross so that my sins have been paid for in full. And if there's someone here, oh God, who's listening, someone at home, wherever they may be, is listening to this word, and they need to take advantage of the opportunity of grace, I pray, oh Lord, that they will do it right now and say, thank you, Lord, for holding the hand back. Thank you, Lord, and they will accept you and become part of the church. In Jesus' name, amen. I told you, you'll put on the screen, that there's five reasons why God allows uh, trouble to come in your life. And sometimes God will use trouble to uh, direct you. Sometimes God will use trouble to inspect you. Sometimes use trouble to correct you. Sometimes God will use trouble to perfect you. And then sometimes God is using the trouble to protect you from getting deeper into something that is unhealthy for you but one thing I do know that whenever God whatever God does God is always motivated by love God is never motivated by vindictiveness God loves you and God wants you to love him back and that is why if you have drifted from God God has not drifted from you God will never leave you alone and God's magnetic pull is on your heart right now saying, come back to me, turn back to me. And if that is you, I want you right now to email us at info at ssclive.org. Just info and say, I've accepted Christ as my Lord. I have found my church. I, I cannot gather with you because I live someplace else. But I'm going to gather with you as an online church member. I'm going to be an online church member of St. Stephen Church. Call somebody right now. It's literally waiting for you to call 502-583-6798. Or if you're local, you do that. Whether you're national, international, or local, right now God has held the, his hand, the angel's hand, because God has something that God wants you to do. And like the currents, God has been moving your life in a, in a direction. And worst, the worst thing you can do is to flow against the current. If the, if the current of God is moving you to become a part of the church, moving you to go to another level, and you've been hearing the gospel, I want you right now, don't fight against the current. Flow with the current. The river, the Ohio River that is in Louisville, Kentucky, flows to the Mississippi. I don't know where God's current is going to take you. But when you get there, you'll look back and say, thank you, Lord, that I got in your will. So listen, you come on right now. It's, it's time to say yes to the Lord. Uh, we've got just, I think this is the last Sunday in August. And um, so fall is getting ready to begin. So let's, let's let this last, what, four months be the best four months, not of the year, but of your life. You've made it through COVID. God has held the hand, his hand back. You're going to keep on making it. So right now, come on and become a part of the church. Give your life to Jesus Christ. The praise team is going to sing right now. I'll be back in a moment. God bless you. Great is your mercy, I see. 
day after day forever faithful towards me always providing for me great is your mercies I see great is your grace we prepare to go forth from this place and we now understand the mercies of God which means that whenever we come to worship don't strut don't strut peacock proud into the presence of God but come humble and bow before God because of his mercies which are new every morning great is thy faithfulness thank you for worshiping with us uh, continue uh, to be a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ. Let us continue to worship, continue to witness, continue to connect with a Sunday school class, continue to be a good citizen, continue to do acts of kindness. Make sure that you fill out the census form, and you're registered to vote to be a good citizen and continue to delight in the Lord and in his law meditate day and night don't thank God for your your blessings but don't delight in them delight in the Lord because uh, they are a resource your 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 job your education that's a resource your money is a resource but God is the source behind the resource which means that if you lose the resource you don't lose the source. The same source that provided the resource once can keep on providing it over and over again. God bless your heart. Don't forget Wednesday night we continue our study in the Word of God. So join us Wednesday. Hopefully all of our platforms uh, will be up and running. Uh, this is what happens with technology. But I thank God for our tech team, uh, which is a ministry. Technology is a ministry. And once they realized that things were down and it's nothing wrong with us, it's, it's around the city and we're just uh, in a vicinity in which the internet is down. But they got right on it and they had contingencies and plan B, which became plan A. So continue to pray for all who are doing ministry, those you see, but also those who are behind the scenes who are making a tremendous difference. And we need to, we need to celebrate them, and when this is over, we're going to have a big celebration for the hard work that these people have done. Don't forget, next week, uh, we have our concert. We'll talk more about that, but we want you to get with us and invite people uh, to this international event. Amen? Amen. Let's receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. For me. Great is your Great mercy. Your mercy for me. Great is your grace. Forever faith.
Thanks so much for tuning in to this broadcast. We hope that that word that was brought forth has deeply enriched your life. Be sure to check us out on all of our digital streaming platforms, Facebook, YouTube, and SSCLive.TV so we can stay connected. And we don't want you to leave without getting an opportunity to be a giver as we push through getting out the gospel. You can utilize our push pay system. Simply text SSC Live to 77977. If you're watching on SSCLive.TV, all you have to do is hit the giving tab. You can also give by visiting SSCLive.org and click the giving button. St. Stephen is now on Cash App. Our cash tag is cash tag or dollar sign SSCLive1. And don't forget you can always mail in your tithes and offering. Address it to St. Stephen Baptist Church, 1018 South 15th Street, 40210. Don't forget to invite all of your family and your friends. And join us here every Wednesday and Sunday. At St. Stephen Church, we're connected to God, connected to people. Get connected.